Hello and welcome to the evening news. My name is Dino. And here is the stories. Community hero gunned down. With the back to school rush not far away, some parents in the St. Andrew community of Bell Rock were anticipating having their children's book lists filled by Craig Biggs Barton. Nicknamed Father Christmas by everyone in the Kingston 11 area, Barton was described as a compassionate being who ensured that every child was attending class. They said that his laughter was also contagious. But the 40-year-old will never make anyone laugh again or assist another child with school expenses, as his life was cut short by thugs in a drive-by shooting in the community last Wednesday. Him send every youth in here go school. Him put on everybody pot pond fire, and if you beg him, him not tell you no. He will give the last that he has. Worse, back to school a come now, he would be filling book list for children, although he has two children sent to school also. Biggs was just a good man. To know him is to live him. He has the most God pick me in here, one of Barton's loved ones said. According to police reports, Barton was among a small group sitting outside his place of work when a green car drove up with men who opened fire. The police were alerted and the injured men were transported to the hospital. Burton succumbed to his injuries on Friday. A video of the deadly attack showed Burton and another man sitting on a bench when they were attacked. Burton, who was a licensed firearm holder, returned the fire as the car sped away. He was later seen walking towards a vehicle assisted by others. As the tears welled up, one of Barton's relatives said she was praying for a speedy recovery. When me hears tell him dead, me just start to scream. Me couldn't stop screaming. The entire community cried. We didn't expect him to die because he looks so strong in the video, especially the way he fired back. But he got five shots. He was even talking after he got shot. He was a strong youth, and nobody in here will ever say anything bad about him, she said. One of Barton's employers, Tony, described him as a hard-working individual who had been working at the family's wholesale since he was 12. He came from very humble beginnings. Biggs was a man who could cook three pounds of rice and it shared with 20 people. Every Sunday people would line up at his gate for dinner. He is always working and he was just a peacemaker, he said. My son was murdered years ago and I never cry for him the way I cry for Biggs, because I know my son was doing things. I can swear for Biggs and the other worker that got shot that they are no wrongdoers, he added. According to Tony, he has transported many injured men to the hospital, but Barton's death hits him differently. This is harder because Biggs was really close to me. Biggs died a hero because he returned fire, and probably more persons would have got shot or even die, Tony said. A senior officer at the Hunts Bay Police Station described Barton as a decent human. He was a good youth and the incident is quite unfortunate. Based on our knowledge, we don't know of him and anyone being in any arguments or so on. He is not known to be involved in anything wrong, the police said. Mother and son killed in Spanish town gun attack. T. Catherine, Jamaica, a mother and her son were shot dead by gunmen on St. John Road in Spanish town, St. Catherine on Monday night. They have been identified as 50-year-old Georgia Coleman a businesswoman from St. John Road, and Jerome Justin Walters, 21, a bus conductor from Railway Lane, both in Spanish Town. It was reported that around 7.45 p.m., the two were at the mother's business place when two men drove up on a motorbike and opened gunfire hitting them both. Police said Walters received gunshot wounds to his upper body. Coleman ran and collapsed at the side of an unfinished building. She also sustained gunshot wounds to her upper body. Walters was rushed by police to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Coleman was also taken to the hospital by residents and was also pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the gun attack, the police said. They are once again jostling for control over the lucrative extortion racket in the bus park and surrounding businesses in Spanish Town, leading to a flare-up of violence in the capital that has claimed five lives in the past week. A man was killed in a police shootout in Maroon Town. St. James early Tuesday morning. It is reported that at about 3.30 a.m., a police team was on an operation in the Shaw Castle area of Maroon Town when they came under heavy gunfire. The police say a heated gun battle ensued with a group of men for several hours. After the shooting subsided, the man was discovered suffering from gunshot wounds. 
the police say an illegal firearm was taken from him. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Independent Commission of Investigations has commenced an investigation into the shooting. PNP calls for due process for Haitian migrants. The People's National Party, PNP, is calling for due process and fair treatment, in accordance with international law, of the Haitian migrants who arrived in Jamaica recently. It says their arrival presents a humanitarian challenge, necessitating swift and coordinated efforts to provide assistance, protection, and humane treatment to those in need. It's suggesting that the government prioritize ensuring the Haitian migrants are provided with appropriate legal assistance and access to due process, and establishment of proper reception facilities to accommodate the essential needs of the migrants, including health care, shelter, and basic amenities. The PNP says this must include comprehensive and transparent screening processes to identify vulnerable individuals, such as unaccompanied minors and those in need of immediate protection. It's also calling for the government to establish an overarching mechanism to strengthen interagency cooperation and coordination for effective management of the situation, including immigration authorities, humanitarian agencies, and relevant government ministries, partnering with non-governmental organizations who have expertise in this area. The PNP points to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the International Organization for Migration, and CARICOM as possible resources. This should include sharing resources and intelligence and adopting best practices to ensure a unified and effective approach in managing the influx of Haitian migrants. This must include upholding international human rights standards and ensuring that all migrants, regardless of their nationality or immigration status, are treated with dignity and respect, it says. Search underway for drowned police recruits body. The High Command of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, says a trainee officer drowned at its Tranquility Bay, St. Elizabeth, training facility while trying to aid a fellow recruit. He has been identified as 19-year-old Rayandre Pike, of Linstead, St. Catherine. A comprehensive search is currently underway to locate Pike's body. Pike was part of Batch 150 which started training in March 2023. He was a dedicated young man, committed to serving his country, and his losses felt deeply within our ranks, the High Command said in a media release. The police say the preliminary investigation has revealed that after the completion of their morning physical training, Pike and a few fellow recruits ventured to a section of the beach to alleviate muscle fatigue. In a tragic turn of events, Pike lost his life attempting to aid a fellow recruit who had gotten into difficulty in the water. The JCF says despite being a stronger swimmer, Pike was overcome by a strong undertow. Meanwhile, the JCF says while our training exercises are designed to be rigorous, the safety of our personnel remains a priority. Two men fatally shot by police in Negril, Westmoreland. The Independent Commission of Investigations has commenced a probe into the fatal shooting of two men by the police in Red Ground, Negril, Westmoreland on Monday evening. They have been identified as 40-year-old Richard Mosley and 25-year-old Shane Grandison, both of Red Ground. The police report that information was received that a man sporting a dreadlocks hairstyle was seen brandishing a gun in Negril. At about 6.10 p.m., the police say cops intercepted a motor vehicle fitting the description in which the man was traveling in the red ground area and blocked its path. They further stated that a man exited the vehicle and opened fire at the police, before escaping into bushes. The police returned fire. It was later discovered that the driver and the passenger in the front seat of the vehicle were shot. They were rushed to hospital, where they were pronounced dead upon arrival. Following the fatal shooting, Upset Red Ground residents lashed out at the police accusing cops of killing the men in cold blood and claiming that both victims were not troublemakers. Updated, Bob Marley Beach developers get construction go-ahead. The Wolf Group, developers of the $200 million US dollars luxury resort in St. Thomas, which has caused a rift with residents in St. Thomas over access to the Bob Marley Beach and ownership of a portion of lands on the beach, has gotten the green light to start construction. Norman Stevenson, of one of the families who are claiming ownership of 2.7 acres of land on the beach, had applied for an injunction to preserve the property and to stall the construction. However, Justice Maxine Jackson yesterday refused the injunction. The Stevenson family, who has sued the developers, has reportedly been operating and residing on the land for over 60 years and is claiming ownership of the land by adverse possession. 
Stevenson's attorney at law Marcus Goff told Irie News Media TV that the injunction was to prevent any demolition or any interference with the lands of the Stevenson family. The applicant, in the meantime, will return to court on July 26 for a summary judgment application. Stevenson is among residents of Bull Bay who have registered strong opposition to the development, which is adjacent to their Beach Road community. The Stevenson and another family are insisting that they have built their livelihoods on the state-owned Bob Marley Beach, which reportedly forms part of the scope of the project. They have said that they are facing the threat of eviction. The residents are also claiming that they are at risk of losing access to the beach as the adjoining lands for entry were sold to the developer. However, this aspect of the case has been fixed for another date. The residents and beach campaigners, the Jamaica Beach Birthright Environmental Movement, are suing the Wolf Group and the Commissioner of Lands to protect their rights to maintain access to the popular beach. However, one of the directors of the Wolf Company, Donovan Reed, in a previous interview dismissed the resident's claim as patently false. According to him, no threats of eviction and demolition were made. He said that an access point has been maintained to the beach on a 2020 master plan submitted to the government for the development that is expected to be completed in two years. Folks will have access to swim in a section of the beach. Fishermen will have their livelihood. There will be a school, and, refurbished housing. All of that was submitted to the government, he said. This is the first ultra-luxury brand development of its kind on the island and, importantly, the first in the English-speaking Caribbean. Jamaica should be privileged and is privileged to be chosen as the destination for this development, Reed said. He said the development will give significant credibility to the southern coast of the parish and attract other ultra-luxury brands with the multi-billion dollar Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project opening up St. Thomas to investments. The law firm Myers, Fletcher & Gordon is representing the Wolf Group.